Hi guys and girls on YouTube, welcome to my channel. I made a video a couple of weeks ago and I demonstrated finding a short circuit with a milliohm meter and a, a few of the people in the comments put it wasn't very clear how I actually found the fault and I wasn't showing everything in the, uh, the video, that's because I had trouble holding the camera at the same time. So I've got another TV in here with a dead short, it's a very very common fault so please don't leave comments in the um, in the messages saying this is a common fault on this tally um, but there's a dead short across three diodes in parallel um, now what I'm going to demonstrate is how with a milliohm meter um, you actually find which diode of the three is faulty when they're all in parallel so we take a quick look here I've drawn the circuit diagram uh, you can see we've got three diodes in parallel so if you measure across there, they'd be short, there they'd be short, and there they'd be short. So we don't actually know which diode's faulty. Um, now, by using a milliohm meter, if we take a reading between here and here, and then we take another reading between here and here, um, you're actually measuring from the faulty diode. You're measuring also the resistance of the track and the lead of the diode from there to there and there to there if that makes sense. So um, let's quit with this and we'll move over to the practical demonstration. Right, so this is the TV in question. Um, as you can see, the negative wire of my meter, if we follow that through, I'm, I'm having to do this crocodile because I'm holding the camera at the same time. So I've clipped that onto the one of the diodes. Now if we take, uh, if we take the positive uh, probe and if you watch the meter there so if we go on to the first diode there you can see it goes right over there's a dead short that's on the first diode now if we move to the second diode and put the meter there again there's a dead short move to the third diode and again we've got a dead short which is of of course what you find because these three diodes are in parallel so now i'm going to demonstrate with a milliohm meter how we can single out which of these diodes is actually faulty that one that one or that one so the milliohm meter set up there let's just move that take that crocodile off there so you've got two probes you clip one onto that diode and then we clip onto the other side and we take the reading like that oh the clips come off let's try again right so we look now we've got a reading of one two nine Right, so I've drawn this on this diagram exactly how the diodes appear in the set in the same order. So across that diode there, we've got a reading of 129 milliohms. Right, let's move to the next one. Clip one onto the middle. And one onto that end there. Now we've got a reading of 128 milliohms. That's on the middle one. So we move over there. And put that in 128 milliohms, and we'll do the first one now. So I'll hold that with a camera, clip onto the first one, and then onto the next one. And now you can see we've got a reading of 127 milliohms. So let's put let's just turn that off a minute. So we'll put that on there. 127 milliohms right so if we examine this now the three diodes in the same order they appear in the set we've got 127 milliohms across that 128 milliohms across that and 129 milliohms across that now that's telling me that this diode here is the one that's faulty so let's move straight over to here remove the test clips take a pair of cutters Snip up the first diode and let's clip the multimeter onto this first one we've just cut. Move that 
into place. And as you can see, that is a dead short. So if we move the probe to the next one now, and then move it onto there, you can see we're reading now about seven ohms. That's the forward, uh, that's the forward resistance of the diode. So if we move back to the faulty one, which is there, that short circuit. That's not, that's not. So that is how you find um, which of the three diodes is faulty with a milliohm meter. So I hope that clears up the confusion. Um, and uh, many thanks for subscribing. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video, guys and girls. All right, goodbye. Um, actually, before we close this video, let me just show you what's alarming about this TV, the runtime. So we put it into the service mode. So, when does the show start? And if we look there, TV lifetime, 7970 minutes. Right, so take a quick look at this. 7,970 minutes, you divide that by 60, that gives you hours. So if we have a look here... It's only had 132 hours use this tally before it's gone wrong. Alright guys and girls, I'll catch you in the next video. Many thanks for subscribing.